Hello, fourth graders. This is Miss K, and we are on lesson seven of unit five, and we're going to talk about myths and volcanoes. So, um, a myth is a story that is passed down from generation to generation. Um, it's not proven to be true, and usually they have like talking animals, things that don't happen in real life. So, they're stories that are used to describe why something is the way it is. So we're going to talk about myths about volcanoes. So your first vocabulary is offering. That's a noun. Something that is presented as an act of worship. Strong-willed is an adjective. Determined to do what you want, even if other people tell you not to. Bitter is an adjective. Uh, that could mean resentful and angry because of unfair treatment. It can also mean being very cold. Outsmart is a verb to trick or defeat someone by being clever. Revenge is a noun, the act of getting even for a wrongdoing. A caldera is a noun, and that is a crater caused by the collapse of the top of a volcano. Lofty is an adjective, and that means high up. Eternal is an adjective, lasting forever with no beginning and no end. Elder is a noun, a person who is older, respected, and often in a position of authority. So chapter five is called Mythic Volcano Spirits. And our big question is, how do volcano myths help explain volcanic activity? <clears throat> Interrupting volcano seems almost alive. It hisses, rumbles, and makes the ground shake. It's easy to understand why ancient cultures thought powerful spirits lived inside volcanoes. Belief in volcano gods helped people make sense of volcanic eruptions. Some believed that when volcanoes were quiet, it meant the volcano gods were content. Some people also believed that when volcanoes erupted, it meant the gods were angry. People tried to keep volcano gods happy with offerings of food, flowers, and animals. People told stories to help explain why unpredictable events like volcanoes occurred. Many stories included volcano gods as part of the explanation. These stories or myths were retold again and again. Over time, volcano myths became an important part of a culture's history and tradition. The myths were creative explanations for natural processes and events. Hawaii's Goddess of Fire Pele is the ancient Hawaiian goddess of fire and volcanoes. She is known for creating volcanic mountains and islands. When she unleashes fiery lava, she also destroys land and everything on it. Belief in Pele began centuries ago. Native Hawaiians believe the goddess lives in Kilauea. Hope that's right. <laughs> An active volcano on the island of Hawaii in the Hawaiian island chain. This Hawaiian volcano myth tells the story of how she came to make her home there. Long ago, Pele lived in the spirit world with her parents and many brothers and sisters. Pele was strong-willed and had a short temper. When she got angry, she caused things to burn and lava to erupt from the ground. Pele got along with most of her siblings, except for her sister. Here's another one. Nomo Kai Okaihi, the goddess of the ocean and seawater. Over time, Pele and Namo Kai Okai became bitter enemies. Pele decided to find a new home, so she set across Earth's ocean in a great canoe. Several of her brothers and her youngest sister, Hiai Kai, <laughs> sorry, these are hard, Hiai Kai came with her. The canoe landed on Kuai, the, north, the northernmost island in the Hawaiian island chain. There, Pele met and fell in love with Luio, Luio, the island's king. She boldly asked him to marry her. After a moment's hesitation, Luio agreed. Who could say no to a goddess? Before the wedding could take place, however, Pele insisted on creating a suitable place for the couple to live. Pele's idea of a good home was a huge hole in the ground warmed by fires of hot lava. So here's Pele, and here is Loio. Lo Loio. 
and she is asking him to marry her. Pele had a magic digging stick. When she jam jabbed the stick into the ground, a crater would open up in which volcanic fires burned. Pele began digging along Kauai's rocky coast. Every time she made a crater, seawater mysteriously flooded in and put out the flames. Much to her dismay, Pele discovered that her sister, Namakaokai, had followed Pele to Kauai. Namakaokai was trying to ruin Pele's plans to build a home and get married. Hoping to outsmart her hateful sister, Pele fled to... Oh, my word's not there. Hang on, I don't know how to say that word, guys. There it is. Owohu. 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 The next island in the Hawaiian chain. She took her youngest sister... Haika and her brothers with her. Namako Akai followed them, and once again, she caused seawater to fill every crater Pele dug. So Pele kept moving, traveling to the islands of Malokai and then Maui. There, too, Namaka Okai worked her watery magic. Time and time again, she turned Pele's craters into cold, wet holes in the ground. So this is Pele, and this is her sister filling in the fiery holes. Finally, Pele reached Hawaii, the largest island in the chain. Pele climbed the mountain called Kilau and dug a crater at its top. The bright orange flames of volcanic fire flared and did not go out. Pele's crater on Kilau was far above the sea, out of reach of the ocean goddess. Pele was pleased with her new home. She sent Hayaka to fetch her husband-to-be from Kauai. She told her little sister to be back in less than 40 days. She also warned Hayaka not to fall in love with Lauhai Lau herself. In turn, Hayaka made Pele promise to protect a grove of beautiful trees that grew on Kalau. Hayaka adored the trees. She was afraid that if Pele lost her temper, she would send out rivers of lava to burn them down. The journey took much longer than Hayaka expected. By the time she reached Kauai and found Laihau, more than 40 days had passed. On the trip back to Hawaii, Hayaka grew increasingly fond of Laihau. She also grew increasingly afraid of how Pele would react to their being so late in returning. When Hayaka finally re reached Kalau with Lo Loiao, I'm sorry guys, I'm butchering these names, I'm trying. She looked in horror on her beautiful forest. It was gone, burned to the ground by Pele's volcanic fire. To punish her older sister, Hayaka kissed Lo Loiao. Enraged, Pele sent a huge river of lava streaming down the side of Kalau. Loiao was buried beneath it. Driven by the need for revenge, Hayaka dug into the rocky side of the volcano. Lava began draining out and flowing toward the sea. One of Pele's brothers stopped Hayaka before all of Pele's volcanic fire drained away. Because so much lava had already been lost, the top of Kalau collapsed. A great caldera, or bowl-shaped depression, was left behind. It is still visible at the volcano's top. Two of Pele's brothers took pity on the dead king, and on Hayaka, who truly loved him. They dug Lohiao out of the lava and brought him back to life. Hayaka and Lohiao were married and lived happily ever after, while Pele remained in her lofty volcano home. Some people believe that Pele still lives in Kilau when the volcano erupts. When the volcano erupts, they say it's a sign of her fiery temper flaring again. All right, and there's another picture to go along with our story. You can see him being killed by the lava. Princess Power. In 1880, Mauna Loa erupted. A large lava flow crept down the mountainside toward the city of Hilo. The Hawaiian princess, Ruth Kilikolani, Kilikolani traveled to the scene as the lava neared the city. Princess Ruth stood directly in the path of the advancing lava. She recited ancient chants and made offerings to Pele. The next day, the lava flow stopped. This helped keep belief in Pele alive. All right, so that is the story of the Hawaiian Islands 
in those two sisters. We're going to talk about a different place now um, called Crater Lake. The Klamath Indians of the Pacific Northwest have a myth about the creation of Oregon's Crater Lake. This deep, nearly circular lake fills the large caldera of an ancient dormant volcano called Mount Mazama. Mazama is part of a chain of volcanoes that makes up a portion of the Cascade Mountain Range. Scientists believe that Mazama's caldera formed during its last major eruption nearly 8,000 years ago. Rain and melted snow filled the caldera to create what came to be known as Crater Lake. The following Klamath myth about Mazama's eruption and the lake's formation has its roots in these geological events. And this is the Crater Lake. You can see it's surrounded by those mountains. Long ago, the world was home to two great spirit chiefs. The chief of the world below, Mana Dalkini, Mano, Mana Dalkni, lived inside the earth and ruled above the ground. The chief of the above world, Sahali Tai, Tai, let me check that real quick, guys, hang on. These names are test in this K today. All right, so his name is Manadokni, and it doesn't tell me how to say that other word. Sahali Tai. Sahali Tai ruled above ground from Earth's surface to the starry heavens overhead. Sometimes Manadokni visited the above world. He climbed up through the inside of a snow covered mountain and emerged from a hole at the top. From there, he could see far and wide. He could see the forests, the rivers, the lakes, and the camps of the Klamath people. All right, so we have two spirit chiefs, the one of the below world and the one of the above world. One day, Manadokni spotted the Klamath chief's daughter, Loha. Manadokni thought Loha was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Immediately, he wanted her to be his wife. He came down from the mountaintop and proposed to Loha. He promised her eternal life if she would agree to marry him. Loha refused. So Manadokni sent one of his below world servants to ask again. The servant brought many gifts. He laid them out before Loha and tried to persuade her to marry his master. He reminded her that if she did, she would have eternal life and live in the mountain forever. Loha refused. She ran to her father and asked for help. The chief of the Klamath people called the tribal elders together. They all agreed that Loha should try to hide from Manadalkni, so she did. Manadalkni was very angry when he found out that Loha had refused him yet again. He raged inside his mountain, making it shake and rumble. He threw lightning bolts and spewed fireballs from his mouth. The top of the mountain exploded, which sent hot lava and choking clouds of ash raining down on the land. The Klamath people waded into the streams and lakes, trying to escape Monadalkni's fiery revenge. They cried out to Sali Tai for help. So he's the underworld um, leader, and he's angry, so all of that lava and fire is coming up. The chief of the above world came to the aid of his people. He fought Manadalkni and the two spirits waged a violent, fiery battle. Sali Tai eventually gained the upper hand and forced Manadalkni back down into his mountain. Sali Tai caused the top of the mountain to collapse, forever shutting off this entrance to the below world. The Klamath elders prayed for rain. The rains came and put out the volcanic fires. Rainwater filled the caldera on the mountaintop, creating the high, deep body of water known today as Crater Lake. All right, your questions. So this gives you a sentence, and it wants to know what does the word spirit mean in this sentence? On page 43, why would Pele have decided to find a new home? So she left the island. Why did she leave? Number three, the story of Pele and, that should say, her sister, tells how the Blink Island chain is formed. Number four, what is being described on page 46? So the page numbers are all here. So scroll back up to 46. 
So this right here, what is happening um, when Pele gets angry? Number five, so whatever you chose here, find some evidence to support that. Why is it an earthquake? Why is it a tsunami? Volcanic eruption or thunderstorm? Give me some evidence. Number six, how are Princess Ruth and Pele's sisters similar? Remember there was that short little excerpt about the princess right here. So how is she similar to Pele's sister? And how are they different? So one way they're similar and one way they are different. Number eight, the Klamath Indian myth is located in blank. Nine, how do scientists think that Crater Lake was formed? Ten gives you a sentence using the word eternal. What does that word mean? And then 11, I want you to summarize in your own words the Klamath myth's explanation of how that crater lake was formed. All right, let's hop on over to skills. We have a quote to start. Um, so Hayaka and Loia were married and lived happily ever after while Pele remained in her lofty volcano home. So here's another sentence using the word lofty. The eagle built a lofty nest on the side of a cliff. Lofty means high up. So in these two sentences, does lofty show a noun, a verb, an adjective, or an adverb? All right, now we've got three different meanings of the word lofty. We just talked about meaning one at a great height. The second meaning of lofty, lofty could mean deser deserving to be admired. So if somebody was um, very important, they would be lofty because they're deser they deserve to be admired. They deserve to be respected. And the third meaning is when you think you're better than others. So if somebody is bragging, they could be lofty. So three meanings. I want you to give me a synonym for each of these meanings. And I gave you a link right here to a thesaurus. So you can click on that and then type in the word in the box. So we'll type lofty. Here's our three meanings. So here's the first one, high, elevated. Here are all the words you can use for a synonym. The next one, grand or stately. That is the same as our meaning too. So give me another synonym for the second meaning. And then give me a last synonym for the third meaning. All right. Now you're going to do something similar for a couple other vocab words in that chapter. So the word outsmart. If you need to, you can look it up here. Outsmart. Oh my goodness. The definition is here. It's a verb. It means outwit. And here are some synonyms. If you scroll down, it'll show you how to use it in a sentence. And it gives you some antonyms. And as I just showed you up here, synonym means the same. Antonym means the opposite. So you're going to give me um, a sentence using the word outsmart. Give me a synonym using the word fond. An antonym, so an opposite for the word revenge. And then the last word, caldera, I want a definition written in your own words. So again, use this link. Type in those words, and that will help you answer those questions. If you need more help with that, please get on Zoom. Join us for our lessons. But other than that, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.